Hey architects out there, so you're interested in potentially including radiators into your next project and radiators are great for uh, existing houses. Let's say you're doing a uh, renovation of a federation home. They're awesome because they keep the house or the existing part of the house really comfortable and really warm. Now, I won't go into all of the details and the physics of why they keep it warm, why it's different and potentially, well, definitely better than air conditioning for heating. But there's a, a, a video on our YouTube channel which goes into all these details. So if you're interested in that, look that up um, and it covers all that there. But right now, I'm just covering what I think that architects uh, are interested in and the questions you typically do ask when you're interested in these kind of systems. There are different types and obviously uh, architects are in interested in the aesthetics and usually choosing the most expensive radiators um, available. That's my experience, right? And I don't blame you because the really expensive ones do look really, really nice but they are crazy expensive. They not only double the price of the radiators, you know, sometimes they 10 times the price of the radiator. Uh, but here, so we're in Fremantle in WA, and here in a Federation home, 1895 roughly, and there's a radiator system, which is also um, combined with a floor heating system and a modern extension, and a towel rail in the bathroom to keep the towels warm and um, heat the room a bit and dry the towels out. Now here they uh, have selected for the classic sort of standard radiator type, and the reason is, Aesthetically, they're pretty standard, average, right? But the most attractive thing about them is the cost. Um, so uh, people usually get over the aesthetics pretty quickly when they see the cost difference. Now these are in almost every house in Europe and they're producing their millions every year. So they are fairly cheap to buy compared to the, all those other fancy radiators. Now we can put the fancy radiators in, but usually, uh, yeah, the budget prohibits this. So here, uh, we've got these classic radiators in the rooms, then we have a heat pump which is producing the hot water for, or warm water I should say, for the radiators, the floor heating and the tower rails. And a heat pump is one option and it's a great option because it uses a little bit of electricity and it, to harvest heat from the air or from the ground. And it does this at a really high efficiency, so let's say for every one kilowatt of heat, uh, sorry, electricity that goes in, we get with radiator systems about four and a half kilowatts of heat out. So 450% efficiency. Where should we put radiators? How many do we need? Do we need space around them? Radiators traditionally, like you can see here in Europe, back when the buildings were you know, less airtight, less energy efficient, when the glazing was pretty leaky, they were always put under windows. And the reason is they created a thermal barrier between the cold trying to get in through all the gaps around the window the, there was natural convection of the warm air which would create a thermal barrier and sort of keep more heat in the room. Now, we don't need to do that these days because A, the houses are built a bit better um, and B, we live in a milder climate here so we don't have the, those cold extremes. But often we still do put them under windows because there's no other furniture, there's just simply space there for them and they sort of blend in, you know, they look like part of the window almost. So you can put them under windows or you can put them anywhere else on any other wall in, in the room. It doesn't really matter where you put it as long as it's not being blocked by something. Now, you can put like, let's say a couch in front of the radiator and let's say have a 20 to 30 centimeter gap between the radiator and the back of the couch and it will still heat the room and it'll still work, but it won't work as well. And I'm, yeah, sure, it's sort of marginal, you know, we're talking it might work 10, 20% less effectively. But if you're doing it, you might as well do it right. And so you wanna put it somewhere where it's exposed to the room, to all of the furniture. So it's gonna heat up all the walls and the furniture and they're all going to become secondary heat emitters. And it's also going to directly heat the people that are sitting or you know standing or doing whatever in the room. So it's best to not hide the radiators away. A hidden aspect of the radiator heating systems uh, is the piping. So insulated piping runs from the heat source to the radiators or to each radiator and that carries the warm water to each radiator. Uh, and that's often the tricky or the challenging part is finding a, a way to conceal the pipes 
while still installing them properly, like so that they're, you know, um, clipped to some sort of a background, they're insulated properly, etc. And so often during a renovation, there's the chance to get under the floor. So that's a, a fantastic way to do it. You might be able to see behind me, the pipes are rising from the floor here and connecting to the radiator. We can also run it in the roof or the roof space or the ceiling and then drop it down uh, in say wall cavities or in robes or linen cupboards, things like that, and have it popping out neatly to the radiators. Um, and worst case scenario, you know, we might have exposed copper piping, which is really neat, um, but not everybody likes that look. Uh, we can also run the piping outside, let's say in the ground, very well insulated and, and um, protected against water incursion. Um, but that again is sort of down the line. But if you're thinking about including these radiators into your project, it's great to be able to have a bit of installation space during the project, during the renovation, where either the floor is being brought up and so the space, there's access that way, or let's say in the roof, they're probably the two easiest ways. With the heat source, your gas boiler is a pretty good option if you don't have much space because it's just a, a box that's hung on the wall and it has all, all the components that are required inside. And so that's really good for space saving. They can be inside and they have to be flued out to get rid of the exhaust gases, or they can just live outside and they have a special weatherproof cover. Heat pumps are a little bit harder because first of all, they're bigger. And so you need a space for them to breathe because especially if it's an air source heat pump, because that's where it gets the heat from. It harvests it from the air. So you need to be able to discharge that air that it's stripped the heat out of and hopefully it goes away and doesn't get recirculated back in. If it gets recirculated back in, the efficiency starts to drop pretty quickly and then the running cost is higher. The heat pump has to work harder and it might even affect the lifespan of the heat pump. So we want to make sure that there is a, a, a sufficient room around so that there's fresh air available at all times to the heat pump. Now, heat pumps, well, boilers, gas boilers are pretty much silent, right? They just burn gas and that's a quiet thing to do. Heat pumps have compressors and fans. So if you get a cheap um, heat pump, then it's gonna sound like a motorbike and it's gonna blow lots of air and your clients probably aren't gonna like it and the neighbors are gonna hate you even more. <clears throat> so what you want to do is at least get a mid-range or a premium heat pump. Now the mid-range heat pumps sort of sound like an air conditioning condenser. You can't really tell the difference, it sort of sound the same. The premium heat pumps, they are almost silent. They are sort of whisper quiet. Um, and sure, they do cost more, but in areas where you, know, you might have higher density or you might have some um, potential noise, you don't want to annoy the neighbors with the noise, um, or it has to be close to, let's say, bedrooms, you would definitely be better off investing in the premium heat pump so that you avoid all of those issues straight away um, and everyone can just enjoy the beautiful warmth in the house. So can anyone install this? Well, in theory, yes. Unfortunately, it's not really a regulated uh, industry or trade here in Australia. And so you do see uh, a lot of people trying their hand in it. They think, oh, it's a great idea, I'll give it a crack. Um, and they put it in and they make a lot of the common mistakes where they don't insulate the piping correctly or they undersize the radiators and therefore there's not enough heat in the room or they have the heat um, pump or the boiler working at a really high temperature level, like water, the, the water it's producing is really high temperature, which means that the heat source is working really hard and therefore the system economy is pretty poor, costs a lot to run. So you see that happen all the time and unfortunately we do get calls almost every week with radiator systems not working as they should. So how do you find or choose the right contractor to help with your project? And how do you avoid you and your client getting screwed over with a dud system that might cost a lot to run, might not produce or provide the heat that is required for the room to keep it comfortable, um, and it might be a noisy system or have any number of problems? And honestly, we see these almost every week we get a call from someone saying, help, someone's put this system in, it doesn't do what they promised, can you help us fix it? And a lot of the time we can help them fix it, but it costs a lot of money. So I encourage you to do your homework 
and probably if you just want to you know avoid all the the mess and the fuss and everything just go with euro heat <laughs> no but seriously you need to find someone that understands how the systems work, the physics behind it, how much heat is required into the, in the room, what should the water temperature be? Because anybody can put one of these systems in. It's actually an unregulated um, trade, right? Anyone can do it. Any plumber or electrician, you know, we see all sorts of people try and put these in. And a lot of them don't work efficiently, so they cost a lot to run, and they don't provide the heat or the comfort into the rooms. And that's the main reason you're getting the radiator system. It's not because of the aesthetics, right? It's because you want the, the client wants to live in comfort in their room, in their house, sorry, not just the room, but in the whole house. And the only way to guarantee this is by finding someone that has a lot of experience, has a proven track record, and understands the physics. And so one question that you can ask is, what is the design temperature of the system water? And if they say, oh, don't know, it doesn't matter, or if they say, you know, 60, 65, 70, 75 degrees, red flag. Go move away, because they don't know. They, they know how to hang a radiator on the wall, connect some pipes to it, but they don't know how to um, get every ounce of efficiency and comfort out of the system. So definitely ask that question, and if you can, ask for some, say, references because that is the only true way to find out whether they know what they're talking about. You know, is the client happy with the installation? Is it costing um, what they promised it was gonna to cost to run? Is it keeping them luxuriously comfortable um, or naturally comfortable in the house? Is it a low noise system or is it annoying the neighbors? So this is what you need to find out to make sure you and your client don't get screwed over. So if you're looking for a radiator heating system, whether it's radiators by, by themselves or combined with say floor heating and tower rails into your renovation project or even a new home, please do give us a call at Euroheat. We'd love to help. We've been doing this for over 30 years and we're engineers and contractors so we can guarantee peace of mind for your project.